hello everyone uh, i am mubarak currently working as a software engineer uh, at epscode uh, so uh, today's webinar uh, we will see uh, how we can seamlessly provision and manage pg pool on kubernetes using qdb so without further ado let's dive into the webinar okay so let's first go to the table uh, of contents quickly for uh, today's webinar. So in this webinar, we'll discuss what is PG pool. Also, uh, we will briefly discuss about PG pool architecture. Uh, we'll see how KubeDB provision PG pool. Also, uh, we'll see the offerings from KubeDB uh, uh, about the features and description of uh, PG pool. Also, uh, shortly we will have a live demonstration uh, of uh, of the webinar okay and uh, at last we'll have a q a session for you guys if you have any specific question we'll try to answer and discuss about it okay uh, so what is pg pool uh, pg pool is a versatile uh, proxy solution position between postgres servers and database clients uh, you can configure multiple postgres server as a backend for pg pool PG pool also offer essential functionalities such as connection pooling, load balancing, in-memory query caching, and many more. Also, uh, you can route specific query to specific Postgres with pre-configured uh, query rules. PG pool uh, effectively uh, enhances the performance, scalability, and reliability of Postgres database system. Okay, <clears throat> now we will briefly uh, discuss about PG pool architecture. Uh, here in this two picture, uh, we can uh, see the architecture of PG pool. Uh, uh, now let, let briefly discuss about it. Uh, for uh, specific specific task, PG pool have specific process. Initially, PG pool have the uh, main parent process. Then the uh, parent process for three type of process. Uh, one is PCB process and another one is worker process and the last one is child process the worker process uh, uh, will check replication delay for postgres backend servers uh, on behalf of pg pool uh, and then uh, if you use kubd postgres you may not need this worker process for replication check because kubd postgres already uh, have these functionalities also, we have a PCB process. Uh, with this PCB process, uh, the PG pool admin can remotely configure and uh, control PG pool. Uh, and the main process here is the child process. Uh, these child processes are uh, uh, these child processes are uh, these child process will. Uh, do the connection pulling and the connection handling uh, and the, all the necessary steps. Uh, we uh, we can configure the child processes. Uh, we, uh, if uh, uh, the number of child processes uh, can be configured in the PG pool config. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, connection pool uh, here uh, for each child process. Okay. Now, let's see uh, what what can we do uh, with keep to be pg pool uh, here uh, when a user apply a post uh, pg pool cr or custom resource uh, keep to be provisioner will create a pet set uh, which is a custom resource made by apps code and it is basically a replacement of stateful set but can do more things than a stateful set also keep to be provisioner will create necessary secrets services uh, etc then if you use keep the postgres you just need to mention the app bending keep to be made for postgres in the pg pool here and then keep to be will do the rest for you but if you uh, use an external external postgres you need to mention the app bending and also create the app bending for pg pool also now uh, pg pool has uh, three type of termination policies uh, when the termination policies is wiped out uh, you can uh, delete all the resources uh, by uh, terminating PG pool. But if the termination policy policies do not terminate, uh, the rejection, uh, uh, the termination will be rejected. Also, the term if the termination policy is delayed, uh, the secrets will be remained and the other resources will be will be terminated. 
ओके सो हेयर द ऑफरिंग फ्रॉम कीप डी बी फॉर पीजी पुल पीजी पुल उल मैनेज एक्सटर्नल डिपेन्डेंसी साच एस पोस्ट गेस मैनेजमेंट फॉर यू इफ यू इज कीप डी पोस्ट गेस इट उल हैंडल ऑल द थिंग्स नेसेसरि फर ए पोस्ट गेस सार्वर अल्सो उइ हेव कस्टमाइजेबल हेल्थ चेक फर पीजी पुल Also, you can configure PG Pool with your own configuration easily with the same EML of PG Pool. KeepDB provisioner will sync users and password to PG Pool for all the user and that exist in the PG Pool backend server automatically for you. We also have uh, multiple termination policies. Uh, we also have default uh, security context. where we can enforce pg pool ports and containers to use non root users and also keep to be pg pool have capability to run in restricted namespace environment uh, so uh, with this command you can uh, install uh, pg pool on your cluster also you, uh, the links will be given in the description for detail info so now let's dive into the live demo session okay uh for the cast uh, for the cluster uh, i am using kind cluster uh, here uh i have already configured a kibdb postgres uh, for you uh, you can also install it uh, by kibdb documentations uh also uh here the sample emls uh we are using for this webinar uh, uh let's discuss the about the fields uh, here we can specify the pgpool version uh we currently have a two version 4.5.0 which is the latest version for pgpool also we have 4.4.5 uh here we can specify the repl uh, specify the replica numbers uh here in the postgres ref we need to mention the abandoning name of postgres uh also the name space where the abandoning resides also we can uh, specify the termination policy also if you uh, need to use the sync user option you can enable it if you enable it uh, the kibdb provisioner will automatically uh, bring the username and passwords from uh, backend postgres to pg pool also uh, we can custom config the uh, pg pool with init config field here uh, you can specify your custom configuration okay here uh, we will apply the pg pool eml first let's see it uh here uh, at first we'll uh, deploy uh, the sample eml without the custom configuration uh here uh, we can see uh pg pool will uh create a auth secret for you uh this auth secret will be used for the pcp users uh, mainly the admin users for pg pool also the sample config uh this configuration file will be created from the uh created from the init config field or or the default config provided by kubedb and uh we have on replica so it is running and also we can see uh the db is ready for use so we can port forward to Now the PG Pool service for using it. Also, uh, here in this field, we can see uh, we can specify the namespace for Postgres. So that means uh, we can configure cross namespace Postgres for our PG Pool. Here, our PG Pool in the pool namespace and the Postgres in the demo namespace.
Okay, you can uh, use the root pa uh, root password from Postgres. Uh, here we can get it by this command. Uh, here uh, we can get the password from the um, backend dot secret from Postgres. Uh, on this one, uh, we are using QDB Postgres for this demo, and we can also save it in the environment variable. So we do not need to uh, reveal it. Okay, now we can use the PSQL client for connecting with Postgres. Here we can also see the logs for PG pool. Uh, here uh, we can also create a user. Let's create a user first. Uh, here the uh, zero backend means the uh, primary postgres and the one means the secondary postgres also uh, uh, we forgot to mention that uh, uh, for our QDB postgres uh, we have to uh, two services one is the main service uh, which will redirect it, uh, redirect the connections to any postgres but uh, here is the standby service which will re redirect the uh, queries or connections to only the secondary service, uh, secondary ports. Uh, for PG pool, uh, we can configure any number of uh, any number of backend Postgres, but with the uh, KubeDB Postgres, uh, we we uh, assume that there is two services. One is main the main, uh, main service, and one is the secondary service. So we configure uh, with that. You won't or do not need to specify anything if you use the QD Postgres. Okay, uh, now let's do some query. First, we uh, will create a table. Uh, here we can see the right query hit the backend zero. Uh, the backend zero is the primary postgres. The right query will always be redirected to the uh, primary postgres. And uh, the second, uh, uh, the read queries uh, will be load balanced throughout the primary and secondary servers. Uh, now let's get a select query. Here we can see the uh, secondary ser ser uh, ser service was invoked uh, from this query. Okay. Uh, also, uh, we can see uh, we have uh, created an, an user. So, uh, P uh, PG pool have a PG pool have a, a password file for its own authentication purpose. Uh, here, uh, the password was created in uh, backend Postgres. This uh, user and password will be automatically fetched to PG pool. Uh, you can see it by executing in the PG pool port. Let's see it. Uh, 
uh, here is the default path for path for the pull pass wd file uh, where the all the password resides here we can see uh, user bob was registered automatically here uh, this is because of our sync user features Now let's uh, do a custom config with the init configuration fields. Uh, we will use this uh, YAML for this purpose. Uh, here we will also see uh, the uh, load balancing and also the collection cache options. Let's first delete the existing PG pool. Uh, here is the exact uh, YAML we showed before. Uh, so let's apply it. Uh, we can see it is provisioning. Uh, we can see this is in running state. We can also verify the configuration uh, by executing in the pitiful port. Let's do it. Uh, here uh, we can see the custom config applied. Uh, we also have uh, the default con configuration uh, if an user uh, do not give any uh, field value the values will be automatically filled by our provisioner here we can see uh, the number of uh, init children is 5 and max pool is 50. Uh, we we just applied uh, our custom config to achieve that uh, also I do not uh, need to worry about all the fields because KeepDB will handle uh, some fields for you. Okay. And uh, now let's see the uh, load balancing and query, uh, query caching. Uh, now let's see the log. Okay. Uh, 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 okay, these queries are running in background for health checking. So you do not need to worry about this. We can also use the Bob user. Now list the user Bob. Use the user Bob. First export the password. So uh, we are connected as user Bob uh, in the Postgres database. <clears throat> now let's uh, do some value insertion in the, our previously created table. So we can use the command. Here we can see the uh, uh, it was uh, in the uh, main Postgres server. Also, it again uh, heated the uh, main Postgres server, the primary server. Right query always, will always be redirected to the uh, primary Postgres server. Now, let's do some read query. Uh, here we can see the uh, secondary server was heated 
here we can see the primary servers are heated again we can see uh, the primary servers are seated again uh, again the primary servers are heated the secondary servers are heated now uh, this is because of uh, the our load balancing uh, here uh, we said we want our load balancing mode 1 here also we specified that we want statement level load balancing statement level load balancing means for each query there will be load balancing occurred but if you use uh, session level load balancing uh, then session level load balancing will be configured as uh, when the user first connect to the server the user will be uh, connected to a uh, backend server and the query will be redirected to the this uh, this server uh, every time there will be no load balancing after that but if you use statement level load balancing the query will be balanced every time now let's delete it We will also see another feature for pgpool which is uh, query caching. Uh, here it is not enabled. Uh, we can enable is it by uh, this. Let's see this. Here we just uh, added an extra field. Uh, the field is memory cache enabled. If we use this uh, field, uh, the query, uh, query caching will be automatically enabled. Now let's apply this ML. So let's see the log. Now let's again get connected to the Postgres server. You can see our uh, PG police in a ready state. Okay, now forgot to port forward. Let's do port forward. Now it, again run the query. Uh, here uh, you can see now the query was faced from the uh, log yeah from cache uh if this uh query cache feature is one uh pg pool uh, will try to use the uh query cache uh query cache feature uh uh if the if there is a uh, pbs result from any select query uh, pg pool will uh, try to use it you also we can also see uh the query cache information by this command okay let's first expand the display uh here we can see uh 61 queries was heated uh, in the uh, cache and uh, this many query because uh, we have the uh, health checker running in behind also we can see the uh, 20 queries was missed from the cache uh, we can also see the cache hit ratio uh, 75 percent of the query was uh, faced from the cache uh, there are uh, many uh, configuration parameter for pg pool uh, you can use uh, all of this uh, we have shown you the main features there are also multiple small features uh, which you can use so uh, about the future plans uh, in future uh, uh, we will bring visible monitoring uh, in case uh, uh, we have already uh, uh, 
have the monitoring feature here in our latest release uh, we will show this in the future webinar but uh, it is already here the monitoring feature the prometheus and grafana dashboards all, all are here uh, you can check it uh, we can uh, give the links in the descriptions also uh, we will uh, in future soon we will enable tls for our pg pool also uh, we will bring an ops request so that you can reconfigure your pg pool in running state okay uh, so if you have any question uh, we can answer and discuss about it so do you guys have any questions okay uh, i think we don't have any questions so thank you for joining uh, see you soon